As a veteran systems analyst and integrator with well over 40 years of experience, why buy 8GB when you can get more? I received that comment recently in response to my video about choosing between the 8GB and 16GB M1 Mac, and it's really made me think. Hello and welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have and if you haven't subscribed, the button is just down there. Everyone is entitled to their opinion and I respect other people's opinions, but I do occasionally get some very odd comments on YouTube. Here's a bit more of that comment that I mentioned a minute ago. Plan for the future, not just immediate needs. Many folks can hardly afford new devices once in a decade. Your advice should include them as that is the reality of more than 80% of the global population. As I've always said, if you can't afford or don't want to buy the 16 gig version of the M1 Mac, then don't worry, the 8 gig version is incredible. I maintain that advice. The person who left that comment clearly doesn't agree with me and that's absolutely fine. But suggesting that my advice neglects 80% of the global population is missing the point completely. The M1 chip has democratized computing power for Mac users and I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Let me explain. Before I get into it, and as wonderful as that M1 chip is, you still need to keep your Mac clean. Thankfully, it's really easy to do that with a tool like Cleaner One Pro from Trend Micro, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. One of Cleaner One Pro's greatest strengths is allowing you to find and delete big files and unwanted files that you wouldn't otherwise find. For instance, I ran it on my brand new 24 inch M1 iMac after a couple of weeks of use and it found about two or three gig of files that just weren't needed. It shows you exactly what type of junk is taking up that space and it gives you options for what to do with it. You can run a very quick clean or you can take a much more detailed view in the system optimizer. There's even a big files section which is particularly useful for someone like me working with lots of video files. It lets me sniff out those big video and audio files that I'm no longer using and I can get rid of straight away. You can even find similar photos, so you can find duplicates of photos that you've taken and very quickly delete them. And there's so much more it can do, in fact so much I've got a list. It's got a disk map that you can use to easily see what's in specific folders, a brilliant startup manager, much better than the Mac OS one. You can find duplicate files as well as duplicate photos. It's got app management which is great for fully removing apps, which in Mac OS has always been a real pain. There's even a brilliantly named file shredder for completely removing files that you just want to totally get rid of. There's also a very handy toolbar at the top that you can use to monitor CPU performance, network usage, memory, all that sort of stuff. And from there you can also run a very quick scan for junk files. Cleaner One Pro is absolutely brilliant. Trend Micro are a fantastic company. I like lots of their software. I never ever recommend stuff that I don't use myself. So to find out more and keep your Mac as clean as it should be, click the link in my description. So I've got two 8GB M1 Macs. The first one is the M1 MacBook Air, which is my favorite laptop ever. I've gone on and on about that laptop. If you wanna see my full review of it or my most recent review of it, click above. The second is my 24 inch M1 iMac, which at the moment is sat in my kitchen. Again, I've talked endlessly about this, sorry. But if you wanna see my most recent video on that, click above. And while I've never used either of those computers regularly for very intense creative work like video editing and audio editing, they do play very key roles in this business. And they never ever slow down, I never get beach balls, they never complain, they never crash, they just run perfectly. And more importantly, I never ever think about the fact they only, only have eight gigabyte of unified memory. Any perceived deficiency in that area never rears its head. And actually, even when I have put them to task, so for example, a little while ago, I had to go to Canada and while I was there, I filmed a video for this channel and the only computer I had to hand to edit that video on was the M1 MacBook Air, the eight gig version. I filmed it on this camera, this is a 10 bit color, 422 4K camera, really chunky footage. And okay, it didn't edit it as quickly as I would have done on my 16 inch MacBook Pro or my 16 gig M1 Mac mini, but it was perfectly adequate. For a great many people, the eight gig of unified memory in those base level M1 Macs is absolutely fine. And because of that, my buying guidance for this remains ultra simple and really, really straightforward. If you can afford that 16 gig upgrade without breaking the bank and you think you might have buyer's remorse if you don't go for it, go for it. If you can't afford or just don't like the thought of spending more money on that 16 gig version, don't sweat it. Get the 8 gig version of the M1 Mac. You'll still be very happy and that computer will still last you a very long time. Going back to that comment at the start of this video, we live in a very different world now. 8 gig of unified memory now isn't what 8 gig of RAM used to be 3, 4, 5, 6 years ago. 
Before the M1 chip arrived, the amount of memory or RAM that you used to buy with your Mac was a massive consideration. Configure it with too little and you'd find that possibly apps would start too slowly or your workflows would be hampered by it. Whereas adding too much memory in a bid to create a Mac that would have lots of longevity for you and give you decent resale value would end up with a really expensive computer and probably much more headroom than you needed. It was a minefield, but that isn't the case anymore. I have no idea how unified memory works, but I know that Apple has essentially removed all of the bottlenecks, junctions, and pointless journeys that used to be encountered when data made its way through your Mac. If we were still living in Intel land, and that was still the case with unified memory, then that comment I mentioned at the start of this video would completely have merit. In that world, eight gig of RAM would not make sense for most people today. Because no matter what you were doing, you'd end up running out of memory, the machine wouldn't last as long as you'd want it to, and it wouldn't have a huge amount of resale value further down the line. But we're not living in Intel land anymore. I've been using a nearly maxed out M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro for the last few months, and it is superb. I spec'd mine up to have 32 gig of unified memory, but I don't really need it. As I've discovered, it has far more headroom than I actually need. Occasionally it gets warm and running Final Cut Pro if I'm doing lots of rendering or exporting, but that doesn't really hit on the unified memory much. That's far more to do with the GPU. And I have no doubt that someone else would push that 32 gig or 64 gig version of the 16 inch MacBook Pro far more than I would. And as rumors are suggesting, we should see a new version of the Mac Pro at some stage this year that features Apple Silicon. And that will be even more ridiculously powerful. But there is an extremely limited audience for those types of Mac. I don't sit within that audience and you may not either. But it is nice to own nice things. And if you just want a powerful Mac because you want a powerful Mac, that's cool. But it does work the other way around. The difference these days, and the reason I did get a bit irritated with that comment earlier, is because we're not living in an era now where if you opt for the cheaper version, the base level version of a Mac, you're not missing out anymore. Because of the M1 chip's much more efficient architecture and the much higher ceiling of power that it offers, very few people actually need the higher spec versions. Trust me, if you've been toying with the idea of buying an eight gigabyte M1 Mac, but you've been put off by some of the comments that are similar to that one that I showed you at the start of this video, please don't be. Just go and buy it. I love what the M1 chip has done for the Mac ecosystem. Trust me, you no longer need 40 years of computing experience to help people buy Macs, and that is a wonderful thing. Something else that has got me thinking recently is whether or not I'm an Apple fanboy. Keep watching for a link to a video where I answer that question definitively. But until next time, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.